Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. Ten in a row, that's nothing to be sneezed at. Best record in baseball, that's nothing to be sneezed at. And also beating a team that many expect you to have to compete against to win the American League East, that's a big thing, too. Well, it is, especially here, north of the border in their home ballpark. Uh, nice crowd here tonight. You know, you can just feel that this is the battle of the American League East this year. These two teams are going to go at it all year long, so every game is that much more important. Jordan Montgomery, again, nice job. He got a two-run lead, gave it away, but held it right there in his normal, hey, he got two runs of support. You know, that, that Jordan's used to that. But a lot of feel-good stories all the way around, Michael. Glaber Torres, as you mentioned. Uh, Clay Holmes, a nice job there. Jonathan Loisega kind of been struggling, got out of a big jam there in the middle. And Chad Green closing in at the end. I mean, there, there's a lot of things you can sink your teeth into uh, if you're on the Yankee side. And, and something that you have to like about this Yankee team right now is that they can do it in different ways. So they'd won nine in a row coming in. And during the nine-game winning streak, they had 20 home runs. Now, they had the Glaber home run, which was important today, but they didn't put a load of runs on the board, and they still squeaked one out against a team that really is close to the Yankees because they win these one-run games. It's a great point, you know, and we would even talk about the defensive side of things. A couple of big double play balls. Uh, Kiner Falefa playing great at shortstop. A couple of picks, hard hit balls. The Yankees defensively look like a different team this year. There's no two ways about it. And as you said, Michael, to have LeCastro come off the bench late in the game in a tie game and look like, hey, which pitch is he going? There's no doubt that he's going to steal second. It's just a matter of when he's going to go. He does. He puts himself in a position to score. And Glaber Torres, a big RBI late in the game, and, and you're rolling at that point. You got a one-run lead. Even though Chapman's not available, you run green out there and still get the job done. And one thing that's going to get overlooked with everything that's gone on in Glaber's heroics, if Stan doesn't get on then against a tough pitcher, he lines the single to center field. That kind of opened up the managerial moves for Aaron Boone to bring in LaCastro and the rest, as they say, set up for Glaber to get that hit. Yeah, it's true. I mean, Stanton getting it going, too. And, you know, underneath all of this was that great play he made in right field. And if you think about moving forward, what's the best lineup the Yankees can throw out there? Well, you know they're going to shift it around a little bit. There's going to be sort of that built-in day off for one guy. But this lineup tonight makes sense. If Glaber Torres is Glaber Torres, then Aaron Judge playing center field. The fact that Stanton can play right field opens this all up for the Yankees and for Aaron Boone. If you really think Glaber Torres is your answer at second base and DJ LeMahieu can play third, Donaldson can DH because Stanton is in right field. And the play he made just gives you even more confidence that he can spend more time out there in right field. And that opens up everything for the Yankee lineup. And now we've also said that the Yankees have four, maybe five legitimate closers in their bullpen. That's why their bullpen is such a weapon. And you'd have to say that Chad Green might be plan D or E. He might not be what he was three, four years ago, but that's a nice plan D or E. I don't think many teams have that. He was able to close it out tonight. Yeah, one thing you know about Chad Green is, is he's reliable in terms of throwing strikes. He's not going to be afraid of the moment. He's not going to walk the bases loaded. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to go right after the hitters. And then the silver lining with him was the breaking ball for strikes. He threw three straight curveballs for strikes. How many times have we talked about Chad Green trying to develop a, a, a reliable secondary pitch, whether it was a curveball or some sort of change up to a lefty? It looked good tonight. It was a real weapon for him. And finally, one of the knocks against this Yankee streak that they're on, well, well, they really haven't played anybody, and the Blue Jays have played a tougher schedule. Well, coming into this series, the Blue Jays have played seven series. They haven't lost any of them, but they did split a four-game set with the Yankees. Now the Yankees take the first game against the Blue Jays, and I always laugh when people say, well, they haven't played the toughest teams. They play the teams that are on the schedule, and those are the teams you have to beat. You can't win for losing, right? No. I mean, that was the story last year. Well, you didn't take advantage of the teams that you were supposed to beat last year. Well, Yankees doing all the right things right now. Things look good. They're getting great pitching. I think that's the strength of the team, obviously, early in the early going here as we move into May. The overall depth of the Yankee pitching, as you mentioned, I mean, Chad Green, maybe your fourth option to close. Jonathan Loisega getting it going again. I mean, the Yankees bullpen and the depth of their pitching, even reaching down into maybe guys we haven't seen in AAA as of yet. I say one through 20, the top 20 pitchers in the Yankees organization, as good as anybody in Major League Baseball right now. Well, the Yankees will go for 11 in a row tomorrow night, and we'll be here for that, Ryan.